Hello, friends. This is Lou and Dan on your left, and he's wanting to read this article called The Coming Sudden Destruction. Okay. Yeah, this sounded pretty good here. Um, actually, what brought it to mind was the recent solar activity that uh, we witnessed here um, that total eclipse. And it's like, you know, I wonder if anybody's putting two and two together about things that are going on and out in the solar system and what's really coming. So this article uh, seemed to be, you know, really with the times here, and I think she thought it was good to we read this. So sudden, the coming sudden destruction, well, they know it's going to happen. And in Amos 3.7, it tells us that Yahuwah does no matter unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Why do they have deep underground bases? Why do they exist? Okay, well, governments around the world have been making preparations for a multitude of possible scenarios that may be catastrophic to human existence. Efforts to preserve humanity after several coronal mass ejections, nuclear war, asteroid collisions, among other disasters, are on the increase. Interplanetary bases are being planned, and there are dozens of doomsday seed banks around the world, including Antarctica and Norway. Since the 1950s, the military-industrial complex has more secret projects each year. Deep underground military bases, also called DUMS, connected by extensive railway systems, have been tunneled into the crust of the planet. They know we will soon face an ELE, which is an extinction-level event. We know that is the day of Yahuwah. The inevitable global extinction of mankind is described for us in the scriptures of truth. Let's examine some of the avoided texts that support the fact that the whole earth will be laid waste by fire from the sun and closed like a trap on the whole earth, just as in the days of Noah, but this time it'll be by fire. We look at Yeshiyahu or Isaiah 13, 6 through 9. It says, How? For the day of Yahuwah is near. It comes as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands go limp. Every man's heart melts, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows take hold of them. They are in pain as an asha in labor. They are amazed at one another, their faces aflame. See, the day of Yahuwah is coming, fierce with wrath and heat of displeasure, to lay the earth waste and destroy its sinners from it. Now, if we go to Luke 21, 25, and 26, um, we see, And there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth anxiety of the nations, in bewilderment at the roaring of the sea, and agitation, men fainting from fear and the expectation of what is coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. In other words, the atmosphere fear will basically rip away. Now if we look at Malachi 4, 1 through 6, For look, a day shall come, burning like a furnace, and all the proud and every lawless one shall be stubble. And the day that shall come shall burn them up, says Yahuwah Sabaoth, which leaves to them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the servant of obedience shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and leap for joy like calves from the stall. And you shall trample the lawless ones, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, said Yehuah Sabaoth, Remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant, which I commanded him in Korob for all Yisrael, laws and directives. See, I am sending you Aliyah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and awesome day of Yahuwah. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with utter destruction. Now, if we look at uh, Second Kepha, or Second Peter 3.10, and the present heavens and earth are treasured up by the same word being kept for fire to a day of judgment and destruction of wicked men. Now, if we go back to uh, Yeshayahu 24, 1 through 6, which actually reflects uh, or parallels with Matthew 24, 
with the servant, so with his master. As with the female servant, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so as to the borrower. As with the creditor, so with the debtor. Earth is completely emptied and utterly plundered. For Yahuwah has spoken this word. The earth shall mourn and wither. The world shall languish and wither. The haughty people of the earth shall languish. For the earth has been defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the Torah, changed the law, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse shall consume the earth and those who dwell in it be punished. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth shall be burned and few men shall be left. So, those doing the will of Yahuwah will enter into the coming reign. For the rest, Yahushua will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. If you're seeking for the truth, you will not find it by associating with people that are taught to disobey or meet at a sun pillar on the first day of the week. Men's philosophies have made the world believe lies. But now it's time to wake up and learn that which is pleasing to Yahushua. He's coming soon, and men's traditions can't help you. Now, along with this, uh, I want to read a page or so here out of the book titled Strong Delusion, Christianity's Institutionalized Witchcraft. And this sort of goes right along with this here. The only reason we will be condemned is for rejecting Yahushua's atoning offering of his blood for our sins and continuing to sin by not repenting. The response to this awesome deliverance must be complete submission to the leading into all truth by the indwelling spirit of Yahushua. Our behavior of obedience is the evidence we are being delivered. If we reject the truth when we hear it, it is because we are not his and we follow another shepherd. So we're either worshiping ourselves or a false messiah under the name, another name, than Yahushua. Yahushua's name is the only name by which we must be delivered. It says that in Acts 4.12. He will not give his esteem or his identity to another. That's Yeshua or Isaiah 42.8. If we listen to casuistry and equivocation, we are deluded and easily fall for whatever seems right at the time. The first temptation in the garden involved a carefully explained lie. So either his name is Yahushua or it's not Yahushua. You'll have to prove it to yourself one way or another. It can't be both J-E-S-U-S and Yahushua at the same time. One is a delusion and a very strong one at that. Based on what we understand, we will be forgiven whatever errors we have believed or taken into our hearts. Again, based on what we understand. There is forgiveness for mistakes. We become responsible when we have heard and understood what is true. As we take on more truth and reject error, we're making progress and experience a refining process. Teaching and defending traditions will be chaff, and many examples of them are on display. If we teach and defend the truth, our work will come through the fire of testing. If we fail to teach the true name and fail to teach the Ten Commandments, and we know that we should, we will find that we are in a very precarious spot when we stand before Yahushua. The message of Aliyahu at Malachi 4, 1 through 6 is compelling and a final warning for those in the last days to remember the Torah. In Christian circles, pastors call it legalism when anyone attempts to obey the Ten Commandments as they are written. Can you imagine a prophet or Yahushua himself saying someone is being too legalistic about obeying the commandments? Disobedience has always been our problem. Imagine you are complaining or whining about someone who says they love him so much they want to obey and pant to yearn more and more so they can obey him the best they can. <laughs> he would never speak like a dragon. The dragon hates obedient, commandment-guarding people. Ask the pastors where the scripture verses are that describe legalism being some kind of relationship barrier between you and his people. We're constantly bombarded with lies and delusions. The Gentiles will come from the ends of the earth and say, Our fathers have inherited 
is only falsehood, and there's no value in them. That's Jeremiah 16, 19. Yahushua's bride will be ready. We know the will and the name of our husband. We are the first fruits, and we love and guard the commandments of Yahuwah as we hold to the testimony of Yahushua. We know we are Yahushua's beloved, and we are his, and we disregard the church fathers and the whole Alexandrian cult or culture. We plead for you to become one of us, to be restored to Yahuwah. He only has one covenant and one people. Now, if we look at 2 Corinthians real quick here, 5, 18 to 21, pretty much wraps it up here. And all matters are from Elohim, who has restored us to favor with himself through Yahushua Mashiach, and has given us the service of restoration to favor, that is, that Elohim was in Mashiach, restoring the world to favor to himself, not reckoning their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of restoration to favor. Therefore, we are envoys on behalf of Mashiach, as though Elohim were pleading through us. We beg on behalf of Mashiach, be restored to favor with Elohim, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of Elohim. So there's a whole lot of stuff that we just said here in these two uh, short writings. And it's something that everybody today is missing this, because what's going on in the world, they're all wrapped up in these distractions, politics, the economy, these wars and skirmishes and all this nonsense going on. They're, they're, and they're not hearing from the pulpits, from their preachers and teachers, the things that they need to hear to be restored to favor. They just, they just aren't getting it. So hopefully this, you know, this will help uh, some people understand some things that are really important because time is short. Yes, so what do you run, think, Lou? We're running out of time. Uh, the, the, day, the sixth day of creation, the, the 6,000 years, is going to usher in the seventh millennium, and that's going to be at the arrival of the real king of the earth. And that's the right. Thing, all these things that people are seeing around them, misleading them, and all the cultures that have celebrations, uh, you know, like I was just doing a sketch of a little pumpkin wearing a, uh, a Christmas tree hat. And oh, I was yeah. thinking, what? You know, what, what's this? And I was going to do a little bunny rabbit over there with some eggs and maybe put a Santa Claus thing over there and a Valentine's <laughs> Day heart. All these celebrations, and that includes all the Christian celebrations and all the Islamic celebrations and all the Hindu and Buddhist celebrations, are going to come to a complete end and never be thought of or even seen ever again when he arrives. That's right. Yeah. All that stuff is such an abomination in his sight. And, you know, it's like we talked before. It's all about perspective. And we're looking at things, okay, from man's perspective. And in man's eyes, they seem harmless and they seem good. But in Yahuwah's perspective, you know, and he lays it out in his word for us throughout, you know, these things are an abomination. Don't do these things. And, you know, what does everybody do? They do what he says not to do, and everything he says to do, they don't do. So it's like, you know, uh, it's going to be a rude awakening. I, it's sad to say, but that's what's coming. Yeah. The, the Nazarene are on the earth, as prophetically told of at uh, Yerbiyahu or Jeremiah 31, verse 6. If you read interlinears, you'll see it. But um, everything that's highly thought of among men is an abomination in Yahuwah's sight. Exactly. That's what you just basically said. Mm-hmm. In Luke 16, I think that's where we pick that up. But all, all these celebrations and all the hoopla and uh, things that people think they're doing that are pleasing to Yahuwah are going to get them in big trouble because His wrath is going to be poured out on them. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, that covers what we have here. I think I'm going to think up a really one word catchy name for this one. 
What do you think? Christianity. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, thanks for watching, and we hope you repent for the reign of Yahuwah does draw near. And thank you, Dan. All right, thanks for asking, Lulu.